All right, everybody. So it looks like we are live here. So let's get into this. We're going to try this out, see how this works. And hopefully you guys can see me now. But the main reason for doing this live now is to try and one, save a little time, and then also to interact with you guys a little bit as well. So we'll have the uh, comments open to subscribers. You guys can comment in there. And then maybe towards the end of the video, we'll do a kind of like a Q&A session where for five, 10 minutes or something like that, I'll just answer some questions that you guys do have for that. Okay. So I appreciate it if you guys uh, hit the like button, subscribe, and obviously... Also, let me know how the audio sounds. Um, I brought the microphone a little bit closer to me. Uh, before I was doing this in post, so I was doing a lot of these processing to make the audio sound better in that point. But with going live, it's a little bit more difficult. So we'll try to see how it goes. Okay, so here's what we got going on. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, the main thing, obviously, today was miners were going down. Bitcoin was going down. What the heck is going on, right? I also saw in the comments in my Discord server channel that some of you guys have been selling because of just fear. I think it's uh, capitulation as well. People are getting concerned with miners going down 20, 30, 40, 50%. We'll talk about that a little bit. We'll also talk about, obviously, the big news story today, I think, is obviously Hot 8 being shorted by J Capital. We'll take a look at some of the allegations there a little bit, and we'll look at it, uh, Hot 8's numbers as well. And then we'll get into the Q&A section of this video, okay? So as always, you guys know the drill here. This is not financial advice for entertainment only. Please do your own research and invest in fine coins and companies for full disclosure. And if you enjoy this epic content, hit the like button, subscribe. Helps me out tremendously. So let's take a look at what we have going on here with Bitcoin right now. So if we take a big screen here, we can see that Bitcoin was down today a little bit. Uh, well, a little bit more than a little bit. It was down 3.38%. It was down almost like 5% at one point during the day. We're bottomed out at a low of 40,600. And then it kind of picked up a little bit towards the end of the day. Not too much, but um, still a little bit. The good news, I think, is was we're possibly getting a little bit closer to the bottoming out here, maybe. Uh, and that might be in the form of the CME Bitcoin futures here. So if you look at this chart here, we have a gap between 39,000 and 40,300, 40,400, something like that. If we can fill that gap, I think at that point, we'll have to see how Bitcoin proceeds going forward. It could go down more, right? We just don't know. But I think at that point, filling that gap, I think might be a good area to kind of maybe pick back up a little bit because we've had, obviously, quite a big drop here. From the top to the bottom here, if we look at it really quick, we can see that Bitcoin has gone down approximately, well, 17% here. Oh, that's on CME Futures. Let's go to this one here. If we look at that one, we reached 49,000 and we are down to... Uh, well, right around there, so about 17%, 16.5%, 17% were down. So still not that bad of a decrease here compared to the miners. Miners are down like 50%. Uh, but the RSI has been coming down on the daily, which is good to see. We're back to where we were back here, along with back here, which was back in October of 2023. At that point, the price was at 28000 So I think that's a good sign as well. We may come down a little bit more on the RSI, get down to maybe the 30 mark, which might bring us down to like the 38000 mark, potentially. That's kind of where I'm seeing things right now. Uh, on the miners' side of things, uh, well, that's tough because if you look at some of the miners here, they were down quite a bit today. And obviously, Hut 8 just had a really, really bad day today. Uh, but we'll get into it. But let's go through this really quick here. So Annie was down 8.26% on the day. And you can see it had a high of $4.09. It's down to a dollar. I mean, that one's down like more than 50%. If we look at it here, let's do that. Why don't we just look at all of these, how far they're down already? 57% for any Argo was down 11% today. They are down from their top here to the bottom right now. 60%, 61% on that one. Bit Digital was down 7.1%. It is down from the peak to the bottom, 53%. Bit Deer was down 5.21% today. It is down completely from the top here to the bottom. Right now, 56%. Bit Farms is down 8.37%. That one is down, let's see here, from top to bottom, 41%. So that's not too bad. It's actually doing better than some of the ones right now. Cypher, down 6.07%. That one looks like it's down quite a bit here. It is down all the way to here, 53% roughly. And you got CleanSpark down 6.52% today. It's down approximately, what is that, 49%. So right around 50% as well. Core Scientific is actually one that's probably done the best here. They're getting close to getting out of Chapter 11 bankruptcy. They're down 41%. Well, they're kind of over here now. 37%. So they're doing the best so far. DigiHost was down 7.9%. It's down quite a bit here as well. It is 
44%, so also not too bad, right? DMG was down 16% today. It is down, let's see here, from there to here, 43%. Greenage was down 9.3% on the day. It is way down here. I mean, it definitely went quite high here to $9.25, all the way back down to 30, down 61% on that one. High was down 7.85%. It is down overall from the peak here. 44%, hut 8 is down a lot. Uh, we'll get into hut 8 here shortly. That one had a really bad day today. It is down 62% so far. Iris Energy was down 8 point, oh, hut was down 23% on the day today. Iris Energy was down 8.07%. If we look at it on how far it's been down, 54%. Marathon was down 6.9%. It is down right now, let's see. 49%, so pretty much in line with the, where everybody else is, right around 50, 60%, 40%, depending on which one you look at. Uh, Mawson was down 7.41% today. It is down approximately 48%. Riot is down quite a bit here. Let's see how far it's down. It is down 44% also, not too bad. It's down 4.97 today. Solino was down 0.92%. And its prior high was way back up here. And let's see here, from the recent peak here from 502 down to $3.26, it's down 35%. But from the prior peak here, it's definitely down more than 50%. Stronghold was down just a dollar or 174 today. It is down approximately from the peak to the bottom, 56%. And then Wolf was down 807% today. It is down as well. Let's see, it is down 57%. So we're obviously seeing a pretty huge decrease here in the miners. And Bitcoin's only down, was it 17% or so? So the miners act like a leverage play to the downside and to the upside, unfortunately. Uh, it's great when they're going up, but, you know, when, depending on what time you get in, if you get in towards like the peak, like some have gotten into it, unfortunately, you're going to have that pain, right? Being down 20, 30%, 50%, it's painful. It's going to hurt. Um, and that's why I say dollar cost average into these miners because we just don't know where they are going to go in the long term. We do know that... Historically, in the halvings, after the halving events, miners usually do really well along with Bitcoin. That is the reason to buy and hold and dollar cost average in to reap the rewards afterwards. Uh, but in the meantime, it's definitely going to be painful. You need a pretty strong stomach to weather this. Um, and I did buy today again. I bought some more, about 475 shares of Bitfarms today. Continuing to dollar cost average into it. I'm at uh, a little bit over 15,000 shares right now. Pretty good price average on it right now. I'm still profitable on that one. Uh, same with the other ones that I have. And that's because I've been buying in at, you know, these dips and dollar cost averaging in it. So, but I understand some of you guys panicking and getting out um, and trying to maybe get back in later on when they do bottom out. When will they bottom out? No one really knows. Um, I'm thinking that we may continue to go down at least with the miners until possibly after the having event sometime. So we're still about um, maybe two months away, three months away from that. Before that all happens, we may trade sideways a little bit now, have a little um, dead kid bounces here and there, go back up in price and then come back down a little bit. But in the whole time this is going to happen, I'm going to continue dollar cost averaging. That's just me. You guys have to do what you, it's best for you guys, right? Um, and then obviously my financial advice here. Okay, so I think that pretty much covers that as far as what's going on with the miners here. We're getting pretty good numbers for the spot Bitcoin ETFs. I think BlackRock reached 1 billion right right now today. So there's definitely inflows coming into that. We have outflows from the uh, Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. That's having an impact on things. But overall, things will kind of work themselves out, I think, in the long run. Right now, we're just having a lot of pain here. And it could be just market manipulation by the big guys anyways. Uh, you know, they're trying to get Bitcoin at a much lower price. That is having an effect on the miners. We have the having events, which obviously revenue is going to cut in half for those guys. So we have some some bad things happening potentially. But the good thing is we got the having event, I think, which is going to be good going forward. But it's going to take us still another year to eighteen year to yeah year to eighteen months something like that. Okay, so that's it for that. Uh, let's take a look at the story that we had this this morning come out, which was J Capital. They came out with a short basically and research on why they're shorting it and it was pretty scathing i read it um i'm gonna go into just some of the details here um the other stuff is at least from my point of view i haven't heard of it i haven't read it uh, i haven't researched it so take it with a grain of salt i guess do your own research on this if you believe some of this stuff 
do do your due diligence on this, right? But it definitely got kind of kicked in the butt here today, especially I think they were ringing the bell today in on NASDAQ, hot eight was at least. So some of the things that I am going to go over here, I'm going to use my little iPad here and we'll go over this stuff here. Uh, and why isn't my camera working? My camera's not working. Yeah, my camera just died. Well, that's great. Okay, so I guess we'll do it without the camera now going forward. Okay. Let's do this. That's the fun part about doing live events. Okay. Going back to HUD 8 here. So a couple of things that I noticed here, at least the top part, was from the report. I download, downloaded the report, read it over. It kind of highlighted the things I want to talk about really quick. We're not going to go through it all because it's like, geez, I don't know, over some 20 some odd pages. It's pretty long. I will leave the link down in the description for this uh, if you guys haven't read it yet. But here's the main things here. So HUD 8 recently merged with US Bitcoin Corp. We uncovered that USBTC is backed by promoters with history of legal trouble. In its short existence, USBTC appears to have defaulted on a loan and paid two government fines, one for committing securities violations. And they have a link to that uh, with all the information that you can look at for that. The next one is one of USBTC's largest shareholders is an undisclosed related party. Uh, next bullet point is our diligence. Uh, our, our diligence highlights USBTC's co core assets purchased from Bank of Compute North has historically failed to provide energy and high-speed internet. Unquestionably, the two most important inputs for mining Bitcoin, Compute's North bankruptcy docket show that no one else wanted the assets aside from one bankrupt entity, which bid up the price that USBTC ultimately paid. Right? Uh, and then one person highly familiar with USBT, USBTC told us, without the merger, uh, USBTC would have done a structured bag bankruptcy. Why did HOT pay for $745 million? Then they go on to disclose the numbers here that they got to $745 million, which that is inclusive of 485 in stock, uh, that's $1 million, $160 million in debt per S4 filing on February 13th, 2023, 40 million in planned AI purchases and 50 million in planned capital expenditures that has not been detailed yet. Uh, going down here further, they're also talking about uh, this Hoin Group, which are stock promoters. That was pretty bad in there. Uh, let's see what else did I highlight. I uh, just wanted a couple of things. Oh, USBTC managed services business appears to be at significant risk. It is currently being sued for patent infringement by Lancium, which has been successful in its other lawsuits. So that could be a bit. Uh, Big thing, obviously, there as well. Uh, major dilution ahead, right? They're saying that uh, they think that HUD is going to have to dilute at least 200 million in um, just to stay in business in the short term, which could be obviously bad. But as long as I guess dilution is okay with me, if you're growing, if you're not growing, that's not good. Uh, let's see here, what else was there? They also hired a like a 13 year old uh, meme influencer, which is just crazy. Uh, that's the case. And there's actually a tweet, a screenshot of the tweet from the from the kid saying thank you to the USBTC team for hiring him. Uh, let's see here. There's other things in here. Boy, it's it's a good read if you want to have, well, I'll just leave it at that. I think everyone should read this, especially if you're investing in HUT 8. Do your own due diligence on it. And they also talk about, obviously, their miners and things like that, how their miners are old. They haven't updated those miners at all. Um, so there's just a lot of bad things happening for HUT 8 right now. It's obviously driving the stock price down. So, like I said, I'll leave the link down in the description of the video later on when it's done, when we're done um, doing the live session here. And that way you guys can take a look at it. It's definitely worth the read. Uh, obviously, the company J Capital is shorting the Hut 8 right now. So, you got to take that into account as well. Uh, but some of the stuff is obviously pretty compelling there. So, take a look at it. Okay, so we'll get into Hut 8 here with my numbers really quick. And... Obviously, the stock is way down. It's lost like almost 400, 500 million in market cap. It's down to 630 million right now. And I got to sneeze, so I'm going to mute really quick. Okay, uh, let's see here. So like we talked about, it's, market cap is way down right now. Uh, their share price is at $7.12. And then you can see the performance of the last 12 weeks has been pretty, uh, pretty bad here compared to some of the other miners that we track here. One thing that we talked about, obviously, is their operations. And I kind of, when they were going through the USBTC merger back in, well, they're talking about it in 20, uh, last year, in 2023, I thought it was going to be good for them because they haven't had any real substantive growth themselves as far as hash rate is concerned. 
I thought this would be a benefit to HUT8 more so maybe than to USBTC, but it looks like it was more of a benefit to USBTC than to HUT8, actually, based on what we're reading in this report. Um, going down here, okay. So here you can see, oh, I'm going to sneeze again. Uh, you can see the numbers that they have as far as minor speed, how many they have of those, and then what their uh, hash rate is based on the, all those numbers. So you can see that they do have, at least HUT8 did, have some of the older miners here. I'm going to sneeze. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, so they have some of the older miners. 77 terahash over here. 96 are probably the better ones here. 87 terahash, 89, 90. Then they have a bunch of these 93 terahash miners. I'm going to sneeze again. Jesus. Uh, what a missed opportunity time to have a sneezing fit right now doing a live show. So, uh, but like I said, 93 terahash minus here, 91, 84, 97 is their combined total is what they have. Um, USBTC had some miners that were 100 terahash. And that got us to the 7.3 exahash with, the, with them combined. Uh, but by themselves, I think uh, HUT8 was closer to being like almost a 3.2 if they could get everything up and running. Um, Sorry, guys. Uh, I don't know why I'm getting a sneezing fit. Maybe I'm just nervous. Uh, okay, but going back to this, the miners that they do have right now are definitely a concern there. If we look at the chart that we used yesterday, the table, you can see that a lot of their miners fall be between the 80 terahash miners, the 90 terahash miners as well. Gosh, I gotta sneeze again. Okay, uh, but you can see here that... that if we get to the having event, come having event, and the network hash rate is at 630 exahash, their electricity cost is around four and a half cents, five cents, maybe something like that. We could use that. Their miners that are in the 80 terahash miners wouldn't be profitable until they were at 61,000 per, per Bitcoin right now. Oh, excuse me, sorry. Um, uh, let's see here. Oh, 90 terahash miners, around 55,000 right now. Uh, and then the 100 terahash miners around 49,000, right? So it's not going to be a good start for them going into the having event if they can't get those miners replaced. It's going to be a really bad start actually for them. Uh, but it also depends where the Bitcoin network hash rate is going to go. If that increases even more, that's going to be even more painful for them as it is. Uh, but yeah, you can see how that's definitely going to have a huge impact for them. So if Bitcoin kind of stagnates here for a while after the having event, uh, which it typically does for about two to three months or something like that before it starts this bull rally, this could be definitely pretty painful for HUT8. Um, now, they are buying that uh, for gas-powered plants in Canada. We'll see what they do with those. They don't have a lot of time left to get those retrofitted for their data centers, whether they're using data centers or containers to put miners in. So it's going to be, a, I think, a pretty rough uh, couple months for them after the having event when it does come around. Okay, Going down to also back to HUT8 here. We can see that they're, let me see here, uh, where did it go? I mean, they have a pretty good assets. Your total current assets, cash and cash equivalents, they had at the end of Q3, only 21 million, right? They have a bunch of it in digital assets, 265 at Q3. Now it's going to be obviously worth more because Bitcoin price has gone up. Uh, but it's still uh, not enough that I think that they can do all the things that they want to do with the power plants that they're buying and then having having to, well, not expand really, but just at least change out the miners that, that they do have that are old for the newer ones, it's going to be costly for them. So they are going to have to dilute one way or another. If they continue to hodl, they're going to obviously have to dilute more. Uh, so it'll be definitely interesting for them how they proceed going forward here. And uh, let's see what else I want to take a look at here. Their cost to mine here at the end of Q3, let me see here, where was it? Oh, that's up here. It is cost to mine at that point was 21,000. Um, and that was. Jeez, I just sneeze again. Uh, but that was at 21,847 at that point. And we'll have to find out what the numbers are when they have merged with USBTC and what those are looking like right now for them combined. Wow, this is terrible. Keep sneezing. Okay. Uh, that what else can we talk about i think that's pretty much it i just wanted to point those things out to you guys so that you're aware of these things that are definitely a kind of troublesome right for the company going forward 
And like I said, I've talked before about this when they were merging or stated they were going to be merging. Like, it has to grow. The miners are old. They have, need to do this. Uh, I talked about also USBTC being in debt quite a bit. So it was definitely a benefit for USBTC to merge with Hot 8 that had pretty good HODL, good balance sheet. Um, that was a benefit to them. But overall, I think it's just, well, we'll have to see how the company goes, gets out of this. Right now, it's not looking too good. Okay, I'll just leave it at that. And let's see if my camera still works now or not. If it's if it went dead, might have went dead. Uh, let's see here. Nope, oh, camera's dead. Okay, well, that was fun. All right, so let's get back into the screen view here. And then we'll see if we can get you guys some um, questions answered here. So if you have a question, let me know right now in the comments uh, section part of things. Uh, let's see here. So Rich uh, states, uh, you just need, uh, or that I just said that not even enough of the HODL to upgrade everything. So they are relying on over 50K at the having. Yes. Uh, Beans stated, starting to get afraid that Bitcoin bull market is over. I don't think the bull market is over. I think we're just kind of taking a breather here a little bit. I think we went up quite a bit. And obviously in 2023, Bitcoin was up over 150,000 or 150 percent on it miners were up 300 400 500 600 percent some of them even more core was up over 1000 percent so i think we're just taking a little bit of a breather man right now uh let's see here you guys have any other questions for me uh trying to view this and i know a little screen here making it a little bit difficult let's see if we can zoom this in there we go at least i can see it uh let's see here I'm still here. Uh, a dip is normal. Yeah, I agree. A dip is definitely normal. Uh, we are 100 days away from the halving. Yeah. You know, if, remember, re, if you recall my previous videos where I said before the halving event last time, which was in 2020, the miners were going down in price for a full year before the halving event. This time around, we had the spot Bitcoin ETF. I think that threw in a wrench on things that can mess things up a little bit. Uh, where price was going up much more so. And then I think right now we're kind of going back to that mean or that average where they should be really. Um, so that's kind of what I'm thinking right now. And if I see a dip, for me at least, it's a buying opportunity right now. Right? Uh, let's see. Who else? I am adding, I bought some more uh, Bitforms today. I will buy some more Clean Spark later on, uh, maybe tomorrow, depending on where it goes. If it dips down below 650, I think I will pick up. Uh, Let's see. Uh, some people do think that it's the GBTC is the reason for the dip. Um, I don't know. We'll have, I'm not an ETF expert or the inflows or the outflows of that stuff. Uh, there's probably other better channels for that, but we'll have to see. Uh, Straight Shot says the gold ETF dipped 20% after the launch then. Then it rocketed. Okay, so that's interesting that, you know, there's that comparable to gold that also got an ETF, went down 20%. So maybe this is just part of it. It's getting itself worked out. Uh, Mark Scher says, we need an update from Hut 8 team. Hopefully they are working on getting some of those 200 terahertz miners and getting details, their deals like CleanSpark and Riot. Uh, Hut 8 was usually a, what was it, a micro BT miner shop, right? Wasn't that the one that they were mostly using? Let's see here. I think they were using mostly, uh, let's see, the M30s uh, was where they were really concentrated in. So are those? I think those are micro BTs or what's miners. I uh, can't remember exactly which models those are from who. But that's mostly what they work with, and that's what they have in-house for repairs and everything else. So I don't know. Uh, it would be nice for them to get the S21s or the T21s even uh, at this point. What we really need is an update from HUT 8 as far as all these allegations from J Capital here. Uh, maybe we'll get something tomorrow or something like that. Obviously, silence is not good. So hopefully, they'll provide something like that. Uh, let's see here. TV is asking, what's your prediction beginning of March? I got March Clean Spark 10 calls. Uh, well, uh, March. Okay, so we're basically two months out. Oh, boy, that's anybody's guess right now. My... Honest opinion is I think we may continue to go down a little bit more. I don't know how much more will go down, but I think we may go down and then just kind of stagnate a little bit as far as prices go until 
maybe if Bitcoin starts going up, then might reverse things a little bit. But last cycle, we saw Bitcoin going uh, up for the full year before that event. It went up like 20% or something like that, while the miners were going down 50, 60, 70%. So I don't have a lot of faith in that happening again where things will reverse, but I hope I'm wrong. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, Rich also says he thinks that we have a little bit more shaking out to do. I also agree, right? We'll have to see. I mean, it's, nobody has a crystal ball and knows exactly where things are going to go. You can kind of look at the charts and see where we are getting on the RSI a little bit and then kind of think okay we're getting close possibly to the bottom based on the rsi on some of these on the four hours one hours and you know the dailies how are those going you can take a look at those things a little bit and see how things stack up right now let's see here. who do you think will be the first miner to either go bankrupt post having oh good question that uh there's two that I'm watching carefully. The one that I'm watching carefully is Mawson. Um, I, you guys have heard me talk about Mawson before, uh, about their balance sheet and just their miners also. Let's take a look at Mawson really quick while we're at it. Might as well. Uh, let's see here, Mawson right now. So Mawson, you can see here that their miners are also some of the older miners, 90 terahash miners, 90 and 85 terahash miners, right? We looked at this chart over here. It's not going to be looking great for them, especially come having event. And then uh, depending on what their uh, operation expenses are like, we'll do those numbers when we get the Q4 numbers. So we'll have a little bit more better detail, I think, when the having comes around as far as what their costs are going to be on that one. But going down here, so we saw the miners over here. But look at their balance sheet, 13.65 million. And then the total current liabilities of 46.63 million. Um, definitely a disconnect there, right? That's not good. So that Mawson is one that I'm looking at as possibly being in trouble unless they get rescued by shareholders through dilution, possibly. Uh, but this is one that's definitely on my radar here. The other one would be possibly Stronghold as well. Uh, if you look at Stronghold here, they've been actually doing a lot better lately. But when you look at their balance sheet as well, it's not as bad as Mawson's here, but uh, assets are 12.3 for current and current liabilities are 28.2 million. So they do have obviously that uh, going against them, but they do have some of the newer generation miners. So that's where I kind of think, okay, they might be able to, to survive this. Okay, but Mawson definitely is one of those that's not looking promising here. Uh, any other ones here that I could think of? I think that's basically it. I think DMG, let's see, is it DMG that has, I can't remember here. DMG's got a good balance sheet here, so not a problem. Digihost, uh, it's not too bad either. So yeah, I think really this is going to be uh, on maybe Mawson and Argo. Uh, Argo has some of the older, not really older miners, but they do have some of the miners that are 100 terahash, 95 terahash miners also, and their balance sheet isn't too good either. So that might be another one. Let's see here. Benjamin asks, uh, what about Wolf with 4.5 cents of electricity? I mean, yeah, I mean, their electricity is really good here, but they have so much debt uh, that's due... Uh, just at the end of uh, beginning of April, I think they have 40 million to pay off. They're going to be paying off um, 11 million of that uh, this month here from the proceeds. And I think they stayed in from Q4. Uh, so that'll pay off some of it. Uh, let's see here. We have the numbers here as well. And then when I talked to them on the phone earlier this week, I think I talked to them on Tuesday, they said that they will probably look to uh, restructure the debt. Uh, when they pay it down a little bit here, they need to pay it down by by at least forty million in by April, which I wrote down here. Uh, here it is: forty million of principal balance of the term loans by April first, right? So they need to pay that down by then. So that'll bring them down to what is that? Uh, Total is one hundred forty-six. They'll bring them down to one hundred six million or something like that. Then they got to pay some more of that down. Uh, definitely going to be a challenge for them. Um, but hopefully they can maybe restructure the debt that they do have for another three years. Right? But it's kind of kicking the can down the road, which isn't good. Uh, any other questions you guys might have? Let's see here. Uh, Clean Spark Bid Farm are always at or near tops in efficiency and are my faves. Garrett, yeah, I mean, I agree with that. Hive is also very efficient in that. Um, you also see a lot of times uh, Irish Energy getting pretty close to that. 
but digital as well. Um, there's also, I think, DigiHost or DMG, I can't remember which one, but they're always pretty high up there as far as efficiency is concerned. Let's see here. Brooks says, I'm sticking with the uh, biggies, liquidity, call premium stack, etc. Mara, CleanSpark, and Riot will be around after the having. Yep, definitely agree there. Uh, Riot, I would just love to see them curtail less, but I think there might be just some issues with the Rockdale facility that they have. Um, and th that one is sharing basically a uh, substation with BitDeer, which is just down the street from them. So I think there might be some issues there with that. Okay, um, let's see what else we have here. Let's see, MetaHue says, do smaller miners have a bigger chance at surviving and adapting to the mining requirements after the halving? Um, it depends on their balance sheet and depends if they're growing into the halving event. If you look at some of the smaller ones like DMG and DigiHost, DMG has pretty good miners here. They got the 100 terrace miners, 140 terrace miners, and then they're also getting these... Uh, 190 terrorist miners of T21s, so they're actually growing into the having event, which is good. Uh, just depending on when those get actually installed and everything else, that'll be the determining factor. But they have pretty efficient miners, which is good. They're going to be at 23.9 joules per terahash, so that's good there. Uh, Digihost, with what they're getting here, let's see, they're going to be at 28.43 joules per terahash after the having event, and they're getting some of the, uh, they're getting a little bit of the unknown miners here 122 terahash but overall they do have some of the older ones here like the 90 terahash and the 76 i'm guessing those are probably going to get ripped out here shortly but then they have 102 terahash miners going forward so they also need to grow if you're not growing um, there's a bigger chance that you are going to be going under potentially uh come having an event because your revenue is going to get cut in half unless bitcoin goes up in value you're not going to be in a pretty good spot there Let's see here uh, da -da. In Toronto, I have Hive and Bitfarms. I wouldn't buy any more Hive. Yeah, I actually owned Hive from, well, I've owned it for a long time, from 2017, 2018 is when I started buying it. I missed the top on them in 2021. Uh, everybody was saying Bitcoin's going to 100,000, Bitcoin went to 69,000, and then I had just held on to it through last year. Uh, towards the end, I sold it, actually, and uh, put the money into other miners at that point. Uh, what's a good entry price for Mara? Uh, let's take a look at Marathon. Marathon is right now $16. I think they're undervalued right now. So anything below this is a good entry point, I would think. Um, I'm in between $17 and $25 right now. And then if you look forward, based on the revenue they had in December, it should be somewhere around $25 to $38 potentially. So I think anywhere from now and maybe a little bit lower would be a good entry point on them. Um, let's see. Which are your top three miners? Um, my top three miners would be Bitforms, CleanSpark, and Iris Energy. You could also include in there Marathon. Obviously, Marathon's a monster. Marathon, when I started investing in the miners two years ago, was much higher priced. It looked much more overvalued than like CleanSpark and Bitform at the time. And I saw pretty good growth from those. Efficiencies as well as one thing that I look at, uptime. Uptime is important to me because uptime tells me that when a company buys miners, they're going to be able to pay those off a lot faster when their uptime is close to 100% than a company that's like at 80 or 90% uptime, right? So that's kind of what I looked at. Uh, let's see here. I got out of Mara and Hut today. Too much craziness. I'll, I'll wait to, uh, closer to the having. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm seeing from other people as well in the um, member section of the Discord channel that I have through Patreon. Is a lot of people are saying the same thing as they're getting out because it's just too much craziness, uh, which I don't blame you guys. It is kind of crazy right now. And you have a, you got to kind of have a thick skin about it and have a longer, I think, view term or term view on this. Um, I started buying miners two years ago because I didn't know where the bottom was going to be yet. And I definitely wanted to get in and at the bottom. Turned out that the bottom was a year out after I started buying in uh, 2020. Yeah, 2020, early 2022 is when I started buying. And then obviously we bottomed out and basically the end of 2022 into 2023 and then 2023 was a great year for us so that's there's a couple ways to do it you could do it that way you can try and time the market i suck at timing the market or trying to pick the lows and the tops so i'm just going to dollar cost average in and dollar cost average out uh let's see here uh, uh, 
Dan Dan says, I say, if you want to know when to get in on your top miners, pay attention to BTC price. Yeah, I mean, they definitely follow BTC price. It's a multiple to the downside and multiple to the upside with those guys. Uh, Trey Johnson asks, do you think HUT will survive this? Um, it's going to be more challenging for them with the stock price being down, um, right? They, it's going to be definitely more dilution if they have to dilute. And just depending how well they can spin this or counter this uh, attack by JA Capital for shorting them, that will determine, I think, how well they do going forward. But they need to grow. Like I said, they need to change out a lot of those miners that they have in there right now. They are going to be not very good going forward. So I'll just leave it at that. Uh, Rich has the same fear we saw in Core back in 2022. Yeah, um, but Core was more so because of the debt that the they took on um and you also have to remember that core was doing hosting where they were losing money at it which was just crazy right prior to that they were making a whole lot of money on selling miners uh and p offsetting the losses from hosting and from the gains in selling the miners so that's how they were able to do it but once things dried up and we went into a bear market that that pretty much killed them right there that's the reason why Let's see here. Dan, Dan, I think Bitfarms will do very well. I agree. I think they'll do fine. They may not be the most as far as percentage gains. Um, that one last time was uh, Mara did that last cycle. I'm guessing they'll probably do that again. They're being pretty big. CleanSpark, I think, could do that pretty well also. Growing to 32 exa hash and have the cap capabilities to possibly get into 50 exa hash. That's right within Mara's range, right? So those two guys are going to be kind of battling it out there. Uh, let's see here. Rich, chat lively tonight. Uh, yeah, <laughs> the chat is lively tonight. Uh, let's see here. We'll maybe take another couple minutes here, guys, and we'll call it a wrap. What do you say? Uh, let's see here. Uh, Gary, I know many will disagree, but I avoid miners with significant involvement with hosting or HPC. Some think multiple income streams are a plus. I, I think it's a distraction. Um, yeah, I think um, I'll agree with you on the hosting side of things. I don't know about the HPC side yet, right? We do have some numbers from uh, BitDigital with the $50 million plus dollar revenue stream from their AI stuff that they're doing for the next three years with a customer that they didn't disclose who it is, where they're from. Um, so that's a little suspicious to me, but they disclosed that. So we'll go with what they disclosed. And then as far as uh, hosting is concerned, for the most part, we've seen hosting be uh, not as profitable, right? Riot has hosting right now that they have contracts that they bought out, basically bought, uh, that are unprofitable for them. We saw Core, the same thing. If you do get any profit, it's like 10, 15%, 20 max that you might be able to squeeze out of hosting. So definitely not a uh, worthy venture, I think. Dan, Dan, by the way, I love the channel. Thank you so much. Uh, do HUT make any money from its other streams of income? Uh, well, when they acquired USBTC, USBTC had the managed hosting, they had the dedicated hosting or something like that, other things in there. We'll have to see how that all plays out when they report their quarterly results. Uh, right now, we're just kind of in the dark a little bit on that one. Uh, Gary, a lot of the BT, uh, bit digital info seems very vague. Yeah, um, I did a little post on the Patreon uh, Discord channel about that my suspicions on that one i'm not gonna put i'm not gonna see what they are but um because they are just my little tinfoil hat on thinking out loud on that one uh please talk at this pace your vids are a bit too fast yeah once i get a little comfortable and uh i guess you could say comfortable i do slow down a little bit and then also this is kind of different, right? Because we're doing a live video here so I can take a little bit more time with you guys instead of trying to cram as much information as, as I can into those videos that I record, then edit, then upload. It just takes me a lot more time. So I have a little bit more time to be a little bit more, uh, I guess, relaxed. LM, I know you're cover miners, but what's your perspective on Coinbase? Is it a safer leverage play on BTC? Be a custodian for all the ETFs and potential BTC price spiking in the coming months. Uh, Coinbase, let's take a look at it. Compared to Bitcoin, a lot of people have also asked me about Canon. Um, 
Canon, if you look at the charts here for them, they haven't really done that well compared to Bitcoin. And if we include that over here with coin, let's see how coin tracks against Bitcoin here really quick. So on that one, let's see here. We can see that coin is actually outperforming this year compared to Bitcoin. If we look at the five-year chart on coin, which we won't have, you can see it's actually underperformed, but coin went public here. Um, when was it? Back in 2021, right at the peak pretty much, or beginning of the peak in Bitcoin, and it has not really done too well compared to that. Um, same thing kind of with CAN, but it has done obviously pretty well this year uh, compared to Bitcoin. All right, Bitcoin's right now up at 98% uh, from one year ago. Coins up still 151%, so it was up much higher. It was up 280% at one point, but it's definitely pulled back here some since then. Uh, let's see. Yeah, coin is about 2x usually. Uh, right now we're seeing that for sure. I don't know about prior cycles. Let's go back to a little bit here. Uh, let's see to the peak. And where was the peak? There was a double peak that we had, 69. And then, well, yeah, it's kind of hard to tell because, like I said, coin went public in 2021 at that point. Uh, let's see, Genpel, what the hold on CL Clean Spark? I thought they were they're going to be doing 16x hash this month. What's the delay? They stated the delay a lot in advance. I think they stated that like five six months in advance, saying that they're not going to get to 16x hash by January. And the main reason for that was their electricity provider has to connect their power lines to their facilities, and they told them it wasn't going to be until sometime in Q1 of 2024. Um, the recent updates that we've seen from them is they're thinking they're, they're going to get everything connected possibly this month to start energizing in February sometime. So that's kind of what we're waiting on right now. Uh, let's see. What has hut, what has owned to Hut? Uh, Bubba Cheeks. I'm now 100% Hut. It could have a great bounce from here. You just never know, or it could go down further. That's one of the things. It's very right now. It's turned into a high risk, high reward potential potentially. Let's see. Tim is asking: Is weather going to be another delay for Clean Spark? I don't think so. I think. Um, I mean, we've obviously had the cold snap here recently for them, but um, the power lines I think are going to be on the tower lines. I don't think they're going to be underground or anything. Plus. Georgia is usually a little bit warmer state here than, uh, than at least down in the south part of things. Texas obviously is, I think, it's right around the same area, pretty warm during this time of year as well. So it shouldn't be too bad. Uh, Clean Spark are in a lawsuit with Mawson. I'd avoid both. Yeah, but the loss is only for $2 million there. I think part of the disagreement is on the payment of the Sandersville facility there. Um, I know that they paid some of it in stock and some of it in uh, cash as well. So let the courts deal it, deal with it. It's not like two hundred million or something like that. It's two million. Yeah, it would suck uh, if they have to pay it, but pay it, uh, get it done over with. If that's the case. Let's see. So all miners when BTC at forty eight thousand will be buying back at near. Yeah. How much weight do you put on Plan B and his predictions? Uh, well, he's, I mean, he's got quite a few predictions there. I think he's saying that this cycle, Bitcoin's supposed to get to like 500,000, which I think would be great if it happens. Not sure that it will. Uh, last cycle, he was calling for over 100,000. Uh, that didn't happen, obviously. Um, it's basically a band where he thinks Bitcoin could be in. It could go to 500,000, but it could only go to 150,000, 200,000. Who knows? Uh, I ran some numbers on Bitcoin based on historical uh, ups and downs. And I came up with around 180,000 maybe this cycle if things work out well. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, CleanSpark not mining in Texas turned out to be a good play. Yeah, uh, I think, yeah, Texas, I mean, right now is so saturated with miners that they definitely are having to curtail like Riot and um, Marathon in there. Let's see. All right, guys. Any other questions that you guys have for me? I think we've been doing this for quite a while now. All right. I think we'll just leave it at that. I'll try to figure out what's going on with my camera, why the camera's not working. And then we'll do this again tomorrow. I think this will help with uh, one 
for me, at least time management, I can do this and answer you guys' questions. And then I don't have to update or actually convert the video in post-production, upload it. So it's going to save me a lot of time. And this is kind of fun uh, here talking with you guys here this way. And hopefully I'll get the camera working as well. But that's it, guys. Uh, just want to say thank you. Let me know how the sound is, the sound quality. And obviously we'll fix the video quality tomorrow on that one. Uh, but yeah, other than that, I hope you guys have a wonderful night. Thank you so much for coming in. And I wish you guys a great night. Until then.